Hello, fifth graders, and happy Tuesday. Today, we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. I know you're going to do a great job, and so does Mr. Smiles. This video is going to help prepare us for our practice sleep next week. Let's dive right in. Let's start with our do now. Look at number one. James has a toy box made out of two smaller boxes. The volume of the first box is 72 cubic centimeters. The volume of the second box is 39 cubic centimeters. What is the total volume of the larger toy box? Well, remember, volume is additive, so if I know two smaller volumes, I can put them together to find a larger volume. What operation would I use to find the larger volume? I would use addition. I need to add 72 cubic centimeters plus 39 cubic centimeters. What's 72 plus 39? Well, 2 plus 9 is 11, 1 plus 7 is 8, plus 3 is 11. So the answer is 111 cubic cm. Now you try one. Mary has a storage unit in the shape of two rectangular prisms. The first has a volume of 85 cubic feet, the second has a volume of 65 cubic feet. What was the total volume? Let's see how you did. I can add to find the total volume, 85 cubic feet plus 65 cubic feet. 5 plus 5 is 10, 1 plus 8 is 9, plus 6 is 150 cubic feet. Remember, volume is additive. Now let's look at number 2. Compare using less than, greater than, or equal to. In order to compare decimals, I need to write all the decimals in standard form. How do I write 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1 tenth plus 8 times 1 over 1,000 in standard form? That's 3 and 208 thousandths. Now I can compare by lining the decimals up. So, which sign goes in the blank to correctly compare the decimals? 3 and 208 thousandths is greater than 3 and 28 thousandths. Now try another. Which sign can go in the blank to correctly compare the decimals? Well, let's see. 3 and 503 thousandths is written as 3 and 503 thousandths. I can line my decimal numbers up. And 3 and 52 hundredths is greater. 2 in the hundredths place is greater than 0 in the hundredths place. We also did some three-digit multiplication. Remember, when I multiply 5,694 times 286, I'm multiplying by 6, by 80, and by 200. Let's start by multiplying everything by 6. What's 6 times 4? It's 24. What's 6 times 9? It's 54, plus 2 more is 56. What's 6 times 6? It's 36, plus 5 more, is 41. What's 6 times 5? It's 30, plus 4 more, is 34. Now I'm done with my 6. What do I need to do before I multiply by the 8? I need to drop a 0 because I'm in the tens place. What's 8 times 4? It's 32. What's 8 times 9? It's 72, plus 3 more is 75. What's 8 times 6? It's 48, plus 7 more is 55. What's 8 times 5? It's 40, plus 5 more is 45. Now I'm done with my 8. What do I need to do before I multiply by the 2? I need to drop two zeros because two is in the hundreds place. What's two times four? It's eight. What's two times nine? It's eighteen. What's two times six? It's twelve. Plus one more is thirteen. What's two times five? It's ten. Plus one more is eleven. Now I can add my partial products to find the product of 5,694 and 286. Go ahead and do that now. 
The correct answer is 1,628,484. Now you try one. What's 3,295 times 243? Enter your answer with no comma. The correct answer is 800,685. Check your work with mine. Now let's do number four. Kyle ran three-fourths mile on Monday and one-fifth a mile on Tuesday. What's the difference between the number of miles Kyle ran on Monday and the number of miles he ran on Tuesday? What operation do I need to use? Well, difference means I'm comparing, so I'm having a subtraction problem. Three-fourths minus one-fifth. I can't subtract those fractions like they are. I need to find a least common denominator and change them so they both have the same denominator. Go ahead and list your fours and fives and say what is the least common denominator of three-fourths and one-fifth. It's 20. So I need to change both fractions so that they have a denominator of 20. When I change three-fourths so that the denominator is 20, what's the new numerator? Well, 4 times 5 is 20, and 3 times 5 is 15. When I change 1 fifth so that the denominator is 20, what's the new numerator? Well, 1 times 4 is 20, 5 times 4 is 20, 1 times 4 is 4. Now I can subtract what's 15 twentieths minus 4 twentieths. The correct answer is 11 twentieths. The difference between the number of miles Kyle ran on Monday and Tuesday is 11 twentieths miles. Now let's look at 4b. Nathan lives 3 eighths mile from the school. Marcus lives 1 third mile from the school. How much farther does Nathan live from school than Marcus? What operation do I need to use to solve this problem? This is also a subtraction problem. 3 eighths minus 1 third. I'm finding a difference. I'm comparing. Make sure to find a least common denominator Change them to equivalent fractions, then subtract. Go ahead and solve that problem now. The correct answer is 1 24th. You can check your work with mine. Now let's look at number 5. Tim had one half of a birthday cake left after his party. He let three sisters share the cake evenly. What fraction of the cake did each person get? Well, what kind of problem is this? This is a division problem. Something is being split up. What's being split up in this problem? One half of a birthday cake is being split up among three people. So what division problem could I use? I could use one half divided by three. When I draw a model, I'm going to start with one half. And I'm going to cut it into three pieces by drawing two lines. Each person gets one piece. So what fraction of the cake did each person receive? Each person received one-sixth of the birthday cake. Now you try one. Mary had one-third of a pound of clay. She used it to make four bowls of equal size. How many pounds of clay did she use in each bowl? Go ahead and solve that problem now. The correct answer is one-twelfth. One-third divided by four is one-twelfth. Now let's look at number six. Mr. Gibson bought 20 pizzas. Three-fourths of the pizzas were pepperoni. How many pizzas were pepperoni? Well, what operation would I use to solve this problem? When I find a fraction of a number, I multiply. Three-fourths times 20. I can start by multiplying the numerator by the whole number. What's three times 20? It's 60 over four. Now I can divide to change that into a whole number or mixed number. What's 60 divided by 4? Well, 4 goes into 6 once, and 4 goes into 25 times. So the correct answer is 15. 15 pizzas were pepperoni. Now you try. Peter had 30 marbles. 5 sixths of the marbles were blue. How many marbles were blue? Go ahead and solve that problem now. 25 of the marbles were blue. 30 times 5 sixths is 25. We've talked a lot about ordered pairs. Remember, when we find ordered pairs, we write them as x, that's how far over, comma, y, how far up. 
Now you try to find the ordered pairs. What's the ordered pair for each point in number 1? Check your work with mine. What's the ordered pair for each point in number 2? Check your work with mine. What's the ordered pair for each point in number 3? Check your work with mine. What's the ordered pair for each point in number 4? Check your work with mine. Today we're going to talk about multiplying and dividing by powers of 10. Remember, a power or exponent denotes repeated multiplication of the same number. So 10 to the first power means I have 1 10, or just 10. 10 to the second power means I have 10 times 10. I have two 10s multiplied together. That's 100. 10 to the third power means I have 10 times 10 times 10. That's 1,000. 10 to the 4th power means I have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. I have 4 10s. That's 10,000. 10 to the 5th power means I have 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. That's 100,000. And 10 to the 6th power means I have 10 multiplied by itself, and I have 6 10s. or one million. I can use powers of 10 to multiply or divide. Every time you multiply by 10, place value increases one time. When you multiply by a power of 10, place value increases the same number of times as the power. And when place value increases, it appears the decimal point is moving to the right. So let's do some examples. 103 times 10. Remember, the decimal point is always right after the ones place. If I multiply times 10, how many times will the place value increase? Well, that's 10 to the first power. So I can move the decimal to the right one time. I can fill in the blank with a zero. My answer is 1,030. Let's do 103 times 100. This time, how many times will the place value increase? Well, 100 is 10 to the second power. It has two zeros. So the place value will increase twice. I can move the decimal once, twice. My answer is 10,300. 103 times 1,000. This time, how many times will place value increase? It'll increase three times. So, one, two, three. The correct answer is 103,000. 103 times 10,000. How many times will place value increase? It'll increase four times. So the answer because it appears the decimal moves to the right four times is 1,030,000. 30,000. Let's try some more. 5 and 82 hundredths times 10. How many times will place value increase? It'll increase one time. 10 is 10 to the first power. So I can move the decimal once to the right. The answer is 58 and 2 tenths. What about 5 and 82 hundredths times 100? This time, how many times will place value increase? It will increase twice. So it will appear the decimal is moving twice to the right once, twice. So the answer is 582. What about 5 and 82 hundredths times 1,000? This time, it'll. how much will place value increase? It'll increase three times. One, two, three. If I have an open scoop, I need to put a zero. So the answer is 5,820. 
And 5 and 82 hundredths times 10,000. How many times will place value increase? It will increase four times. So it appears the decimal is moving to the right four times. One, two, three, four. The correct answer is 58,200. Now you try a few. Three and 31 thousandths times 10 to the first power. Go ahead and do that problem now. Well, place value increases once, so the correct answer is 30 and 31 hundredths. Now do 3 and 31 thousandths times 10 to the second power. Well, this time place value increases twice, so the decimal moves twice to the right. The answer is 303 and 1 tenth. Now try 3 and 31 thousandths times 10 to the third power. This time it appears the decimal is moving three times. One, two, three. So the answer is 3,031. Now try number 12. What's 3 and 31 thousandths times 10 to the fourth power? Well, this time it appears the decimal is moving four times. One, two, three, four. So the answer is 30,310. Whenever I multiply by a power of 10, it appears the decimal is moving to the right the same number of times as the power. When I divide by it, the power of 10, place value decreases. So it appears the decimal is moving to the left. Let's try some. 365 and 2 tenths divided by 10. How many times will place value decrease? It will decrease one time, so the decimal moves to the left once. That's 36 and 52 hundredths. 365 and 2 tenths divided by 100. How many times will place value decrease? Well, 100 is 10 to the second power, so it will decrease twice. Once, twice. Correct answer is 3 and 652 thousandths. 365 and 2 tenths divided by 1,000. This time, how many times will place value decrease? Well, it'll decrease three times. So it appears the decimal is moving three times to the left. One, two, three. The correct answer is zero and 3,652 ten thousandths. 365 and 2 tenths divided by 10,000. How many times is place value decreasing? Well, it's decreasing four times. So it appears the decimal is moving to the left four times. One, two, three, four. This time I have an empty scoop, so I need to put a zero. I have 0 0.03652. Let's try a few more. 1,272 divided by 10. Remember, the decimal starts just after the ones place. If I divide by 10, how many times is place value decreasing? It's decreasing one time. So the answer is 127 and 2 tenths. Now you try one. What's 1,272 divided by 10 to the second power? Well, it appears that place value is decreasing twice, once, twice. So the correct answer is 12 and 72 hundredths. What about 1,272 divided by 10 to the third power? Well, it appears the place value is decreasing three times. One, two, three. So the answer is one and 272 thousandths. Look at number eight. 1,272 divided by 10 to the fourth power. It appears that place value is decreasing one, two, three, four times. So the answer is 0 0.1272. Now you try number 9. What's 1 and 56 hundredths divided by 10? Well, it appears place value is decreasing once. So the answer is 156 thousandths. 
Now let's try some practice problems. Number 1, 8 and 5 tenths divided by 10 to the first. Will the decimal move left or right? The decimal will move to the left. How many times? One time. So, my final answer is 0 and 85 hundredths. Let's look at number 2. Will the decimal move right or left? It'll move to the right. How many times? Four times. So my final answer is 2,489,200. What's number three? Well, it appears the decimal moves to the left three times. One, two, three. So the correct answer is 0 0.00128. What's number four? Well, it appears the decimal moves to the right three times. One, two, three. So the correct answer is 498,320. What's number five? Well, it appears the decimal moves to the left twice. So the answer is 4.1595. What's number six? Well, it appears the decimal moves to the right four times. One, two, three, four. So the answer is 528,000. What's number seven? Well, it appears the decimal moves to the left one time. So the answer is 58 and 261 thousandths. What's number eight? It appears the decimal moves to the right once. The answer is 81 and 5 tenths. What's number nine? It appears the decimal moves to the left three times. One, two, three. So the correct answer is 0 0.0047. What's number 10? Well, it appears the decimal moves to the right three times. One, two, three. So the correct answer is 9,849. You've done a great job on this video. Now it's time to go to IXL practice. Go ahead and do that now.